Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Mafia. If you enjoy this content, please change your name to Modest Pelican Gaming and then die so your tombstone promotes my videos, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. I'm Tommy Angelo, a local taxi driver, and I need to take this big beautiful woman to church. The year is 1930, which means World War II hasn't even happened yet, so I could potentially go and eliminate Mr. Moustache and prevent absolutely everything. Or I could make a quick few bucks driving cabs, and I guess we're choosing the latter. This lass says I'm driving too fast and that she wants to get out and walk, which is quite rude. I try to slap her silly, but we haven't learned how to attack yet, as I'm meant to just be driving cabs for now. I'm still pretty hurt, so I try and squash her, but subsequently fail the mission. Round two, and this time I'll play it safe, but I proceed to run a red light. The police don't appreciate this and they pull me over. I selected a setting where if you don't obey the road rules and a policeman sees you, then they'll give you a ticket. It's called immersion and it's fun. I eventually drop Thick Nancy off, and if I wasn't busy grinding this nine till five hustle, I'd be all up in that floral plus size dress. Being a taxi driver in this era is pretty wholesome, not going to lie. I pick up this drunk guy who wants to go to Little Italy and get yet another ticket on the commute for speeding. The immersion never stops. After dropping him off, I'm attacked by some gangsters in broad daylight. These big salty girls are part of the Morello crime family. You see, they hate me because I gave a pretty heated taxi ride to two people they were trying to kill last night and they want revenge. I decide I better run for it, but as I'm still familiarizing myself with the control scheme, I keep periodically crouching in the middle of the street, which doesn't aid my escape. Fortunately, I run into the exact two people I helped escape who are part of the Salieri family. They resolve the matter using facts, logic, and a pump action shotgun. Don Salieri then gives me permission to get my revenge. Me, a humble cab driver, is going to start beef with the most powerful mafia family in the city. Let's not overthink it, what could go wrong? At least the Salieri family is being nice to me because they do owe me a favor. This straight shooter gives me some Molotov cocktails and we roll out. Not going to lie, I was expecting a nicer vehicle, but on the positive side, Paulie has come along with me for support. I proceed to rear-end a police car because these brakes are non-existent. Not exactly the first impression I was hoping to instill on Polly, but it's only up from here. We head towards Morello's bar and I ensure to prove that I'm the last true Drift King. Suddenly it's real as we are deep in enemy territory. I think it's also pretty concerning that I don't have a fedora yet as how am I going to be taken seriously without one? It's funny how fedoras used to represent class and were worn by feared gangsters. Let's make fedoras great again and start unironically wearing them when we have post-marital consensual sexual relations with women to show the world that only bad boys can wear soft felted curled brimmed hats. Paulie distracts this guy while I choke him to death. Wow, I guess I murder people now. What a huge leap character wise. Some more of Morello's men rock up, but I'm taking the mafia life like a pelican to water as I quickly abandon literally every normal citizen moral I used to have. I generally do like to be quite violent while playing video games, so I decide to really send a message to the Morellos. You break my rear vision mirrors off my cab, I beat your men to a pulp and then burn their unconscious bodies. I'm really banking on being invited to the Salieri Mafia family after this as I'm making a lot of enemies right now. Fortunately, the big Don's like, yeah nah, yeah nah, yeah nah, yeah nah, get in there big fella. I'm officially a gangster boys and girls, we've done it. I even have a fedora now, we're moving up in the world with haste. They give me a gun and I'm no gunsmith, but I'm pretty sure that's the ray gun from Call of Duty Zombies. My main job is to collect protection money from the local businesses. Let's be honest, it's blatant extortion, we're the bullies, but hey, as long as I'm not the victim, right? Looks like our target is the local baker, and he's been short on his payouts this month. I head out back to collect, and my jaw drops to the floor. Who is this perfect woman? That figure, that hood, she's the one, boys and girls, I'm in love. It's clearly not reciprocal as she's mad about the whole extortion thing, but I'll break down those emotional walls eventually, cutie. It's a good gig I've found myself just cruising around with Paulie and Sam. We've got a major racketeering collection out in a motel in the country. It would normally be a long drive, but it's no problem when you're the Drift King. It goes wrong fast as Polly gets shot and Sam's stuck inside being beaten for information. I need to save him, but first I'll have to do what all horse owners dread. I'll have to put the big girl down. I bid farewell to the steed and put several bullets into its head. I then remember friendly fire is off in this game and that Polly is also not a horse. 
The shooting has caused quite a stir and this hoodlum runs at me with a knife. I admire his bravery, but generally guns beat knife, so not the smartest gangster in these parts. It isn't looking great, but at least it provides me with an opportunity to impress Don Salieri. If I can save the day here, perhaps I can prove that I'm a valuable member of this organization. And hopefully the baker's wife hears about this and gets down on her knees and gives me some freshly baked bread. Nothing hotter than being handed a wholemeal raisin loaf by a squatting hooded woman in her mid 50s. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Normalize couples having two single beds in their bedroom so they don't get tempted to fraternize before they've tied the knot. Sammy is in bad shape, I best take these lads to hospital. Then one of the goons tries to escape with the cash and as I value money far more than human life, I take off after him. A classic chase scene while your friends slowly bleed out, you love to see it. I attempt to perform a pit maneuver, but clearly miscalculate the momentum formula, P equals mass times velocity, and fail miserably. Fortunately, I'm a crack shot, especially when auto lock aiming is a thing, and I apprehend the vehicle. I even shoot the dead driver in the face with a shotgun, which is overkill, but I think demonstrates my commitment to communism, I mean Don Salieri. The Don is like, thanks my G, man a real one, no cap. Pretty weird dialogue for a game set in the 30s, but the important thing is he trusts me. I now get to hang out at the clubhouse freely and there's a fine young lass here who tends the bar. She's clearly not as stunning as the baker's wife, but you can't always take home the gold medal. I'll have to settle for the little league trophy. Honestly, I'm not getting much of a vibe, but there's more important things to focus on right now. The lads have placed a large bet on a race and we're hoping our driver wins so we can all get paid. Hoping is for chumps though, and we figure if we can tamper with the opposition's car a little bit, we'll increase our chances. It's almost as if the Mafia are dishonest people. I head down to the track the night before the big race so that I can cause some mischief. So here I am in the middle of the night, driving a race car at 100 kilometers an hour through the city streets when I should be getting a good night's rest. Not only am I struggling with the ethics of this plan, I'm now going to be fatigued tomorrow. At least the tampering mechanic looks like the kind of guy you could trust. It's the day of the big race and everyone's excited. Suddenly we find out our driver has had his legs broken by Morello's boys and will live the rest of his life in a wheelchair and will never be able to have children. I know, pretty awesome, as now I get to race. As a former taxi driver, I guess they figure I have all the skills for competitive motorsports. Fun fact, Lewis Hamilton drives Uber daily and that's why he can cut the apex like a champ. For real, racing was a lot more enjoyable in the 1930s. There were so many crashes and drivers regularly died in fiery explosions. I feel as if the advancement in both automobile safety and the medical world have really taken the fun factor out of the Grand Prix. It gets a little dicey as I almost throw the race, taking a jump and end up hitting a field marshal. Fortunately, second place also hits the corpse, which spins him out, causing his car to explode as well. Some things really do happen for a reason, and I manage to get that big juicy dubs. Everyone's celebrating after the race, and I go and ask Sarah if she wants to hang out sometime, and Shorty says yes. Wow, now that I'm a successful race car driver, you want this D? I guess she can have it, because all the real hotties are taken. You're a lucky man, sir. We've earned this, and the celebrations are welcomed, but everyone's saying Paulie got too drunk and is making a fool of himself. This guy's the one I'm worried about, though, as he looks like he just triple dropped some caps, as he's way, way too into this live performance. I grab Paulie and we have a bit of a moment and then I drop him home. It's all happy times, but then I discover that some thugs have been hassling Sarah when she walks back to her apartment after work. Nobody disrespects my silver medal. I decide to walk her home so that I can remind the hoodlums that this is a Salieri neighborhood. I'm also holding her jacket across my arm, which is unnecessary but cute. She then wants to knock and run, which honestly seems pretty immature, but I'm probably like double her age. It's the good old days where everyone has daddy issues. It turns out she just wanted to give this poor woman some scones. She then briefly goes to hold my hand and then pulls away. Wow, what a tease. You're messing with my heart, woman. Maybe later we can go and vote together. Oh wait, you don't have rights yet. Actually, no, I think women were allowed to vote since 1920. Isn't it weird that that was only a hundred years ago? It's so backwards. Seriously though, I think we should implement a new law where anyone can vote as long as they strongly support communism. I find the guys who's been causing trouble and proceed to beat the absolute daylights out of them. Some would say I'm taking things too far, but this is important as they disrespected one of our own. 
It's not just for Sarah either. This is to show everyone that if you cross the Salieri's, it's not going to be a good time for you. With that done, Sarah and I act out our very own version of a 1930s Brazzers scene. We gently cuddle each other on the couch. God, this conservativeness is hot as hell. I tell the Don about the kids who are hassling Sarah and that I handled the situation. He says I did good and then says for us to go and kill them all. Wow, dude, that seems like a bit of an overreaction, but hey, you're the Don. We just blindly do what you tell us. Paulie and I head to their hideout and between you and I, he is definitely mentally unstable. These young lads actually have firearms, which is a surprise, and so I burn every last one of them. Wow, this is pretty intense revenge, not going to lie. There's a few survivors, but then an electricity pole falls down and fries anyone still breathing. I'm pretty sure they learned their lesson, but if there was any margin of doubt, I think we've more than proved our point. Anyway, there's nothing like burning a bunch of adolescents to catapult yourself into a productive working week. I hope you legends are doing well, and thanks for all the love on the channel lately. As always, I feel just so lucky to have you. Thanks for watching, and a huge thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.